Hello friends, this is Sharon from Natural Awakenings Magazine, and we are joined once again by Dr. Julie Monica, and today we're gonna to talk about squash. It's winter, we're seeing squash ravioli, squash soup, what are the good squash, what should we stay away from, and what's good for us? Dr. Julie is gonna tell us. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Julie, and please tell us more. How are you, Sharon? Doing well. How are you? Great. And I'm so glad to be talking about squash. It was something that um, I've been wanting to jump into myself. It's one of those things we see it out. So many of us pass it up and it's, it's got a hard outer shell. It's funky colors. Um, it looks hard to cook or like labor intensive, I think. And uh, so let's demystify it a little bit. Okay. Right. Let's do that. So there are 12 different types of winter squash. Okay. You can I look this up. Yeah, put in your browser, there's 12 specific types, okay? And the way I'm going to do this is talk about it from a metabolic standpoint, would be, which would mean in my book, as you all know, the carbohydrate content and what we can maybe do with the different squashes. But let me say, the benefit of, of all squash, and especially these 12 winter squash, they have a long shelf life. You can buy it and put it on your counter and decide what you're going to do with it in a week. Oh. which I find great, you know, you and the, that squash was on my counter for a month. Oh, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> That's right. It's so awesome. And it looks nice too. <laughs> I actually make it, it's a little scenery, but you know, again, it's so beautiful. But the thing is with the way that it is and the way that we live our lives, again, it's not something that I think enough of us are taking advantage of. Okay. So, um, they are all, these starchy vegetables, which is what they are, are a significant source of carotenoids, um, which is the food form of the precursor of vitamin A. And they all as well have, secondly, an, a very abundant amount of vitamin C. That's squash. Mm. Um, let's start with, uh, I'm going to read to you um, the three most usable squash for my patients, okay? Okay. These three squashes I'm going to tell you about have 10 carbs or less per cup, Ooh. per a whole cup. They have, I'm going to say it again, 10 carbs or less. That's fabulous to be the base of your dinner, of a meal. It's wonderful. I mean, that's a really low carb. So let me tell you what they are, okay? And I'll go through each of them, make a little comment here. So First one, the most versatile squash um, that there is, that's the notation for this, when you look it up and do a little bit of research, is the banana squash. Now that's the long yellow one, okay? And um, it's considered, like I said, the most versatile. It can be paired with strong flavors like cinnamon, ginger, and curry. So in that dish, for people who eat meat, how about adding a little lamb and maybe a little bit of um, your, uh, uh, you know, some mint sprigs and some carrot maybe and some uh, other things that I won't even go into. Just the lamb and the fact that you could use that um, that starch alone and and a, and a, a, and some type of aromatic herb. Wow, what a great start! Is that the same as a spaghetti squash? No. Oh. No, it's not. It's a long yellow one, okay? And um, it's a little thinner and a little longer, okay? okay. So uh, let's, let's go to the next one. And again, all of these three, everybody, 10 carbs or less for a whole cup. The next one is turban squash. That's the one that is, is got the top and then the, the skirt bottom. And it really, ha it looks like it has moles on it. And it really has vibrant color. It's yellow, it's green, it's a little brown. Um, and it's the one that, it's, it's really hard on the outside. But what a wonderful thing. It's also considered very mild flavor. And they say the best to to pair with almost anything. So it's extremely versatile mm. and it's very good. They tout that with, um, and, and say that it's really a good one for, to pair with meats. So that's a, a, something to think about. Last one. Okay. That's drum roll, the spaghetti squash. And that's, <laughs> that's gotten a lot of um, kudos because people love the, the 
when you scoop it out, it really is stringy. Mm -hmm. um, I've got patients telling me about their bolognese dishes with the spaghetti squash, which I love. Um, that's a chopped meat that they're using with a tomato base with a lot of herbs and oregano and salt. And um, the, the, you could go on and on with the types of herbs you want to use. And of course, garlic. Think about that. And then you've got it over the squash. Hello, that's a meal. Okay. And so squash is only 10 grams of carbs versus if you put that over pasta, you're looking at 50 grams of carbs. You know what? That is entirely for a whole cup. You are looking at 50 grams. Absolutely. So that's huge. And the, the pasta that we tend to grab off the shelf, the macaroni, eh, I'd almost call that a uh, health negative um, food. Whereas this is, this is a plant, so 100%. Good and you're using it. So again, I'm loving it. You know, between this and beans, and it's becoming this a little bit more because beans are really hard to eat and it has to be such small quantities. Again, if you look up your carbohydrate um, per weight in beans, it's, it's really up there though. It's a wonderful food, but this is becoming um, uh, now my number one underrated superfood being the squash. So um, I, I love it that, um, you know, you get those three, right? You're getting a quarter of the winter squashes work for you. So let's do a little bit more of a dive, okay? Um, this, the, another squash that comes up to only 12 per cup, and that's the kabucha squash. And that's K-A-B-O-U-C-H-A. -A. It's kabucha squash. I, I have to be honest, I hadn't really heard of it before, but it has 300%, 300 of your daily vitamin A, this is in one cup, and appreciable amount of vitamin C. So yeah, again, I mean, you know, you might just now see for me, I'm, I'm a simple girl, a little bit of um, vegan butter and sea salt and that squash for the 12 carbs for one whole cup, which is really a whole cup of anything is, is a good amount of food. I'm, I'm fine. That's my lunch. So I'm loving this and it's easy. Well, it's easy again. And you know, guys, the, a lot of squashes now in a lot of the stores you see cubed and in the produce section. So take advantage of it and don't be afraid. Just cut those other ones that you buy whole, cut them in half, open them up and scoop out. You're not, that's all you have to do is you're scooping out the squash. So um, don't be afraid. Put squash on the counter and then in your plate. Okay, let's talk a little bit about why this is so important. Butternut squash, everybody, is at 21 grams a cup. So yeah, if you're going to make something out of it, you have to be very careful. Um, I did have a patient come in and tell me one day that um, they all they had was um, a couple bowls, which could probably even be more than a cup at night for dinner of butternut squash. And they told me that they did add other things that were starch oriented and that was even sweet oriented. Think about how many carbs that is. What did I say to them? You might as well have had cake. Oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking about the pot of the whole pot of soup I ate, and I'm like, oh, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, but the way uh, Sharon was saying that you made it with vegetables, that's a far sight better. Okay. As a, and sounded beautiful with your truffle oil. That yeah. sounded great. Now, health wise, it was good. And that's what people, that's just good to talk about. It sounded like a beautiful dish. You did the onions and, and the celery and the things that you put into it. So, it had more calories and carbs, but it's still a good food. Mm. Maybe not for my uh, metabolically uh, minded patients, but still a good food. So let's go to the last, the, the, the last of the red hot lovers here. And that's the acorn squash. Everybody put your seatbelts on. And that is a whopping 29 grams of carbs. I know per cup. So, but as well as it's high in in, in the carbohydrate content, it's also high in its, in its nutrient content. It's also got a third of the RDA, the recommended daily allowance of folate. It's got calcium and magnesium and more than a whole large banana, the amount of potassium. Oh, wow. So it's chock full of nutrients. You know what I call that? The kid squash. Mm -hmm. You could chop that up and make a good cinnamon, maybe a little sugar cinnamon or a little honey, just a bit. It's for a kid. But look at all the, the instead of a white, just maybe 
you know, with potatoes, this has so much more bang for your buck, as they say. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to call it the kid squash. And you can make it so many ways. I, you know, you could even mash it, of course. And that's what kids like. So, and, and just make it the same way. And uh, they even enjoy the color. So this is the short and the long. I like to keep it much more geared towards the metabolic and, and what to choose because that's what people seem to be looking for. And you can have fun and look up the rest of the 12 winter squashes if you'd like. And certainly there's good recipes. They're certainly healthy. But I did want to report to you on the um, what was giving us, and surprisingly, 10 carbohydrates or less in the three those three squashes, which were the banana, the turban squash, and of course the spaghetti squash. So yeah, so squash it up, everybody. Uh, I'm super excited. Like, I'm sitting here. It's Friday. Thank you for joining me. And I'm like, what is what? I like to cook on the weekend. So what am I going to make? Well, I'll tell you right now. It's going to have spaghetti squash. That is going to be my base. I'm so excited. So thank you. You got me very excited about squash. And you know, I have so many of my patients sending me pictures of what they eat and so forth. And um, they're doing the right thing. You know, they're adding to that spaghetti squash, a lot of chunky tomato and garlic and a lot of the oregano and the parsley. And that really stretches it. We didn't even get to the meat yet, if that's what you're going to uh, put in there. So then um, they're putting in different types of meat. And boy, now you have a dish. Oh, you yeah. have a meal for sure. So yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. Like I said, it's becoming my now number one underrated superfood status here in my office. And um, it's just, uh, it's a warm thing. I mean, you cook it up, it's hot, it's good. Mm. Just another winner. It's, it's, a, it's a comfort food that's so yes. good for you. It's a comfort food. Yes, that's exactly what I want to say about it. It's warm, it's hot, you could do it with all the, and it's sauce oriented, like a lot of things we just talked about. Um, you know, it becomes, but it's a healthy comfort food, exactly. which is, which is what we all need. <laughs> well, thank you once again, Dr. Julie. Um, I'm really looking forward to cooking my squash. You very much inspired me and I hope you have a wonderful weekend and look forward to you, you joining us again. Bye, Sharon. Bye.